First, let's discuss strategies for the treatment of rheumatoid. NSAIDs are commonly used for initial management of rheumatoid arthritis, but the dose of your NSAIDs is going to be the high dose anti-inflammatory effect. And certainly this is where you're going to have the greatest risk of side effects from NSAIDs. The purpose of the NSAID in rheumatoid is to decrease the pain and swelling, but these drugs have no effect on the course of the disease. So commonly we combine an NSAID with a second drug called a DBART, a disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drug. These are drugs that slow the progression of the disease, and they're commonly started with NSAIDs because they have a slow onset of two weeks or up to six months before they start to work. Think about the purpose of each type of drug you're going to use in rheumatoid. Is it pain and swelling? That's an NSAID. Or is it a question about slowing the disease progression? That, of course, would be a DMARD. My clinical vignette reminds us we first have to recognize the patient. A patient with rheumatoid arthritis experiences morning stiffness, a symmetric arthritis, and positive for rheumatoid factor. Since we've previously discussed NSAIDs, let's now focus our attention on the disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drugs. When we look at the table, we certainly have to highlight the drug methotrexate. It has been our most popular DMARD for rheumatoid patients. The drug is cytotoxic to lymphocytes, and while that's beneficial, it can certainly lead to some side effects that include bone marrow suppression. However, the bone marrow suppressive effects of methotrexate are actually more likely to occur when you use this drug as a cancer chemotherapy agent where the doses are even higher. In rheumatoid, where you're taking this drug chronically, there's actually a risk of hepatotoxicity with methotrexate. So the side effect probably depends on the context in which you're using the drug. If it's rheumatoid, watch out for liver damage. If it's a cancer chemotherapy drug, it has a bone marrow suppressive effect. Other options for mild rheumatoid include hydroxychloroquine and sulfasalazine. When you think about side effects for these two drugs, they actually have something in common. Sulfas and the quins can both cause problems in patients who are G6PD deficient. So watch out for hemolytic anemia with either of those as options. Also with hydroxychloroquine, because it's a quin related to quinidine and quinine, this drug can cause synchronism. Remember that this syndrome involves GI upset and tinnitus. So those are some distinguishing features for a couple of our DMARDs. We have several other options to use as DMARDs, including the drugs etanercept, infliximab, and adalimumab. I point out these three drugs specifically because they're going to target tumor necrosis factor and also because these are popular test questions. Etanercept is a recombinant TNF receptor. Because it acts as a TNF receptor, it circulates and binds up tumor necrosis factor. Infliximab and adalimumab are both monoclonal antibodies that bind up TNF. So with all three of these drugs, their, in, their inhibition of TNF is very important. But in essence, these drugs are immunosuppressants. So they're going to increase your risk of infections. In fact, we always recommend that you get a TB skin test before you use any of these anti-TNF drugs. You'll notice I've given you a clinical vignette about Sjogren's syndrome. Sjogren's syndrome, which is an autoimmune disease, can also occur in a patient who has rheumatoid arthritis because those individuals sometimes experience more than one autoimmune disease. So Sjogren's syndrome occurs in a subset of rheumatoid patients, and in order to increase salivation, you might use a muscarinic agonist like pilocarpine. It can increase saliva production and aid in swallowing more effectively. So perhaps that's the setting where you use that drug on your test.